So have you ever thought about how vets learn about pet nutrition? It's pretty surprising actually. Here in the UK, there are only a handful of university, less than 20 actually, where you can study veterinary science. And from what we know, nutrition barely gets any attention in these courses. I mean, it might come up once or twice in five years, which is crazy when you think about how important diet is for pets. But here's when it gets really, really interesting and a little bit concerning because these vet schools are underfunded and therefore they are open to outside money. And that's where things start to get a bit shady. The big pet food companies, you know, like Hills, Royal Canin and Purina, what people often call the big three in the pet food industry, have taken full advantage of this. They offer funding to these schools, but there are some serious strings attached. For example, there was a deal between Edinburgh University and Pedigree, which is owned by Mars Corp, the same people behind Royal Canin, that started back in the 90s. Pedigree paid the university over £20,000 a year, and in return, they got a lot of control. They even set up a position at the university for someone they picked, who was basically there to teach future vets about nutrition. But from Pedigree's perspective, this person also gave nutritional advice to the public through the university's clinic, and any research they did together had to be approved by Pedigree before it was published. But hey, it didn't stop there. The university agreed to only use pedigree products in their teaching clinics and even got their staff trained in how to sell pedigree products. It's almost unbelievable. Imagine a respected university letting a company pretty much dictate what's taught about pet nutrition and then turning their staff into salespeople for that company. Listen, this went on for at least 11 years. And who knows how many vets passed through during that time, learning from this biased perspective. I mean, these could probably carry on today. But listen, it's not just Edinburgh. All the vet schools, like Liverpool, had similar deals. They admitted to having staff members on Royal Cannon's payroll and having their lectures sponsored by pet food companies. And apparently, this isn't unusual. It seems like most vet schools have some level of influence from these big companies. What's even more shocking is that none of this is illegal. The Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons says that as long as a course meets basic competencies, how the information is delivered is up to the university. So, these companies can essentially buy their way into the curriculum without breaking any laws. And it does go beyond just the education at the university. The textbooks that students use for learning about small animal nutrition, well, they are written by those very same pet food companies. The most popular ones, like Small Animal Clinical Nutrition, are made by Hills. And Royal Canin has its own encyclopedia for canine and feline nutrition. These books aren't exactly neutral. They are packed with information that promotes their products, sometimes even more than actual nutritional science. For example, one of Royal Canin's books spends more time talking about soy protein isolate hydrolysate, a common ingredient in their food, than it does on how to prepare home meals for pets, or even raw food. But what really got me was the last chapter of one of these textbooks. It isn't about nutrition at all. It's about how to sell more Royal Canin products. They even give tips on how to arrange the shelves to get pet owners to buy more. And this is what vets are learning from when they study nutrition. And listen, it doesn't stop after they graduate. Throughout their careers, vets keep learning through conferences, 
seminars and journals. And guess who sponsor a lot of those? Well, yeah, the big three again. They are the ones giving lectures, writing articles, and even reviewing the research. Major veterinary associations and events around the world, from the British Small Animal Veterinary Association Congress to the World Small Animal Veterinary Association, are all sponsored by these companies. So, when you put it all together, it is clear that these pet food companies have a huge influence and a huge say on what vets learn and continue to learn about nutrition. And it's pretty concerning because it means that the advice we get from vets might be more about what's good for these companies than what's best for our pets. It's a stark reminder to always dig a little bit deeper and be aware of where the information is coming from, especially when it comes to something as important as our pet's health. I mean, we have the case of hypoallergenic veterinary prescription diets containing sugar. There is a total lack of care and will on many of these pet food companies to refrain from using sugar and sugar derivatives such as dextrose or fructo oligosaccharides, adding them to pet food and treats and labeling them veterinary diet, veterinarian recommended or natural ingredients. In many cases, pet food companies own their very veterinary clinics where pet food with added sugar is then handed to the consumer. This represents a blatant conflict of interest as these companies self-regulate and nothing seems to be done about it. The use of sugar is particularly egregious in pet food because dogs and cats cannot choose for themselves. They rely on us for their care. Kibble companies here control everything to such an extent that they are deeply entrenched in your pet's life. If vet schools get given grants, sponsorships, awards with the company's name on it, if they give bursaries and scholarships to veterinary students in UK universities, how much power and influence does that buy you? More egregiously again, if they supply free pet food for people to make money off and write up textbooks and teaching aid and research, they also pay for research, anything to convince you that this stuff is good for you. Now, if you are really curious and want to know more about pet nutrition and the best way to feed your dog, you should really watch this video next.